On the 9th of April 1922, Harv Midlothian unveiled their war memorial in a service at Haymarket. The column of the clock bears the names of some of the great battles of that great war. But it specifically honours the players, officials and supporters of Harv Midlothian Football Club. On the day of the unveiling, there was almost 35,000 people who gathered there. And moving tributes were paid, particularly to the players who voluntarily joined the 16th Battalion Royal Scots. George McRae, who was the one who raised that battalion, was standing there on that day. And later he would write, in remembering them, we must acknowledge our debt and find some way to justify our own lives so that when we meet our comrades in that better place, we are able to say with a brave face, we did not let them down. Also standing at Haymarket that day was John McCartney. John McCartney was the manager of Hearts before the war. He was instrumental in leading many of the players to sign up, but he was also a man instrumental in making Heart of Midlothian famous across the world. Again, remembering his boys, he spoke saying, everything selfish or personal was thrown aside, obliterated or forgotten, and sacrifice and honor are displayed here in all their glorious transcendency. That's why it's sad that due to our current circumstances, today we cannot be at Haymarket and stand where the likes of McCartney and McCray stood. But we can and we must honour those that they gathered to honour. In 1952, the Board of Directors at Heart of Midlothian added a second plaque to the Haymarket Memorial. A plaque honouring those who served in the Second War. And our annual service of remembrance has become part of the calendar and the character of our club ever since. It ensures that what we are remembering a hundred years ago in our past is still remembered a hundred years in the future. Because this is our story and this is our song. And today we say we will remember them. They went with songs to the battle. They were young. Straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we give our today. Gracious God, our current circumstances of restrictions, masks and lockdowns are a vivid reminder of our mortality, our frailty and the vulnerability of life. And on a day like today, we feel that as we remember those who have died at war or who live with the physical and psychological scars of war. I thank you that through the resurrection of Jesus, hope can be more than mere sentiment. I thank you that it promises not just a return to normal, but all things made new. And that the resurrection of Jesus gives a foundation for hope, a reason for joy, and life beyond the grave. And so, God of all comfort and peace, we ask that you be close to those in the shadow and memory of war, and that you would protect those currently in the darkness of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's my privilege to serve Hearts as the club chaplain. But Jimmy Black was chaplain to the 16th Battalion Royal Scots and he was with the boys at the Battle of the Somme. He prayed with them before they went over the top and then stood and watched as tragically he saw so many of them gunned down. Six years later, on the 17th of December 1922, the same year that the Haymarket Memorial was put up, the remnants of McRae's men sat and they listened to him preach. He described how he had lost count of the amount of times that folk had come to him and asked, where minister is my consolation? Where is the good? Why did he die? A legitimate question, a question we can still ask today. But Black continued, as one who was there, I would say only this, it was God and country who took us to France, but it was loyalty to our pals that made us fight. And so my consolation lies in knowing that these men died for their friends and with their friends, keeping each other company like good comrades in death as in life. His point is this, consolation comes, comfort comes in knowing that these men were with their friends and died for them. McRae himself commented later in a letter to his chaplain on the 11th of November 1928, in the flames I see the faces of my boys, so young and full of promise, the sorrow and the pride are overwhelming, sorrow at the loss, but pride in the manner of their dying. They never flinched, faced by a veritable storm of shot and shell, they marched towards the guns, beside their friends. And that's actually hugely profound. In the darkness and the brutality of the Battle of the Somme shines a light of deep companionship and friendship. The fires of combat welded these boys together as companions. Now that might be something that even we start to envy. The challenge of lockdown has been the isolation and the loneliness that many of us have felt. Now, it sounds mad to envy these lads in war. I mean, what would you prefer? The efficiency and the connectiveness of our digital age or fighting in the trenches in the face of war? But despite our privilege, there is an aching emptiness to our digital age. And we get that at the moment. Talking about football on Twitter is nothing compared to standing on the terraces. Watching a live stream is not the same as being live in the stadium. 
But it's not just that we miss being at the football. Often there is something missing within ourselves. Despite our hyper-connectedness in this digital age, depression and isolation-prompted suicide are rocketing, particularly amongst men. But here on the Battle of the Somme, and here in these comrades from McRae's battalion, shines a light that is a beacon to us in our loneliness and in our struggles. Now, I'm not suggesting that these things are simple or simply solved, but simply hoping that in the darkness of our depression or anxiety or loneliness, that this beacon of light might lead us, play the assist, to lead us to reach out to someone, to cry for help, or maybe be the friend that someone desperately needs. It's this deep friendship that Jesus himself commenting on saying, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Jesus, like McRae and Black, knew that friendship was forged in the furnace of affliction. Jesus stood not in the fields of France facing the guns of a German army, but he stood facing Jerusalem and the certainty of an inhumane and a prolonged death on a cross at the betraying hands of his own people. But he goes resolutely, unflinching like the 16th Royal Scots, because he knows why he goes, to lay down his life for his friends. Not just for their freedom, but for the punishment of their sins. Not just alongside of them, but suffering hell instead of them. And not just as an act of sacrifice, but as an act of eternal salvation. You look at his cross, and you don't just see a method of capital punishment, but an act of love for his friends. And the same is true as you look at the Battle of the Somme, you see not only one of the largest battles of the first war and the deaths of some of our brightest and best, but you see thousands upon thousands of examples of deep, deep friendship. That is something worth us remembering, something worth honouring, and something worth emulating. It is tradition for the club captain to say a few words each year as we remember all those who have given their lives around the world to help keep us safe. I am honoured to be representing the Hearts players at this service, remembering those who have come before us, whose stories remain at the heart of our club, their lives sadly cut short by war. Today communities everywhere are experiencing some of the toughest times as we navigate our way through a global pandemic. Our football communities have been outstanding throughout these difficult months, campaigning and working their tirelessly in so many different ways to support those in need within the local community. And the importance of community is also reflected in our history. When the doors of Tynecastle, along with many other football stadiums, were opened up to carry out fundraising efforts during the First World War to send home comforts to those fighting abroad, our fundraising sent hundreds of footballs to soldiers at the front and many telegrams of thanks sent back to Tynecastle highlighted just how important these small gestures were for morale at the time. One telegram read, The football came to hand in the trenches and the boys are in their seventh heaven of delight at the prospect of a game. No words of mine can express their joy. The memory of all those lost their lives in conflict those who have suffered, their families and their local communities are woven within the fabric of the history of our club and we will remember them. Lord God, our Father, today we commit ourselves to remember and learn from those who have fallen. We pledge ourselves to pray for and think of those who are currently engaged in war on our behalf. May we never lose the overwhelming sense of gratitude for those who fight for our freedom. And may we live as though our lives are investment in future generations, that one day they too may look back on our lives with the same gratitude and echo the phrase, lest we forget. Amen.
Kaiser Bill, he came marching o'er Belgium and France To challenge the empire with warlike advance So the bravest of hearts volunteered for the fray And they threw in their lot with old Geordie McRae Come pack up your footballs and scarves, o' maroon Leave all your sweethearts in all dreeky tune Fall in with the lads, for they're half and away To take on the hun with old Geordie McRae Oh, it's sad to be leaving, but happy to go Now it's up with the colonel and down with the foe And when victory's ours, we'll be able to say That we fought by the side of old Geordie McRae Come pack up your footballs and scarves o' maroon Leave all your sweethearts in all dreeky tune Fall in with the lads, for they're half and away To take on the hun with old Geordie McRae Pack up your footballs and scarves o' maroon Leave all your sweethearts in all dreeky tune Fall in with the lads, for we're off and away To take on the hun with old Geordie McRae Now five hundred comrades lie buried afar And we who are left have to carry the scars Though our wounds may be sere at the end of the day We would gang once again with old Geordie McRae Come pack up your footballs and scarves o' maroon Leave all your sweethearts in all dreeky tune Fall in with the lads for we're half and away Take on the hun with old Geordie McRae Come pack up your footballs and scarves o' maroon Leave all your sweethearts in all dreeky tune Fall in with the lads for we're half and away To take on the hun with old Geordie McRae